You may remain seated for our gospel reading today, which comes from John's gospel, the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus, of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they will die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up and go quickly out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I, know, I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. 
When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters of Trinity. I feel so blessed to be with you today and to be able to share God's word with you. Being here really makes me feel like I've come full circle as I started my seminary journey just four short or maybe long years ago. And here today, less than a month away from finishing it, I'm with you again. So I'm very happy to be here with you and share God's word. Resurrection. What a pleasant surprise that here on this fifth Sunday of Lent, we have a story of resurrection. Two weeks until Easter, and we don't have to wait a day longer to see the power of God's resurrection in the life of Lazarus. Resurrection. Maybe you've been hearing more of this word lately, or maybe you've seen it flash across your TV screen. It happens to be the title of a new show on NBC that the network has been promoting all winter long, it seems. Resurrection is a TV show about dead loved ones from a small town that mysteriously appear years after their death. I've watched a few scenes from the first couple episodes, but I have to admit I did turn it. As you can imagine, it is a bit of a heartstring puller. And as a pregnant woman, I try to avoid shows and fiction that leaves me in a mess of tears. When my seminary friends saw the promotions for this show, there was a collective round of groans. One friend said, resurrection, really? It's hard enough teaching our people about resurrection without having a show to compete with. I laughed at this. I mean, haven't we as Christians cornered the market on resurrection? Well, maybe not. In today's story from John's Gospel, though, resurrection looks quite different. It's not a worldwide mysterious phenomenon. It's not a strange undead reality. And neither is it Jesus putting on a grand display of power or magic. Rather, it comes out of grief and tears and apparent weakness. Jesus is distressed weeping and moved in his very bowels at the death of Lazarus, his friend. Jesus is moved to call Lazarus out of the tomb by human compassion and love. The beginning of our story sets the stage for this big moment of resurrection. John, the only gospel writer to include this story, gives it a very lengthy, lengthy introduction to get our attention. And it's not necessarily in chronological order. For instance, we're introduced to Mary as the one who anointed the Lord's feet with perfume and wiped him with her hair. And yet, she hasn't even done this yet. This is chapter 11, and that story comes next in chapter 12. It seems John's introduction is meant to get our attention and let us know that something big is about to happen. It also serves to foreshadow Jesus' own death and resurrection. In our introduction from the gospel today, Jesus looks like the confident leader who has it all together, who's in control, the one with the plan. And yet, just before he gets to Bethany, things start to unravel. Martha, the sister of Lazarus, meets Jesus on the road. Always the gracious host and the manager of the household, Martha is taking charge. We know from our introduction and other gospel stories that Martha's family has a special place in Jesus' heart. He loves them. And it seems he's used their home in Bethany as a home for himself and his disciples throughout the course of his ministry. 
When Martha meets Jesus on the road, she speaks with him honestly. Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. It's both a lament and a statement of faith. Jesus hints at the possibility of raising Lazarus, and yet Mary misunderstands. She believes in the final resurrection, and yet that does not change her grief. When Mary, her sister, meets Jesus, she uses the same words. Lord, if you had only been here. And her lament seems to echo believers throughout time who have wondered about God's presence or absence during times of death and suffering. She too believes in the final resurrection, but it's the very body and breath and spirit of her brother that she grieves. It's his physical absence she grieves. And Jesus understands this. He's touched by her sorrow. Jesus is greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved, as our story accounts. In compassion and love, he weeps with Mary. As Jesus grieves with Mary and their friends and family for the friend he loved, he shares in their grief and suffering. And then out of this weakness and grief, the hope that Mary and Martha had waited for materializes. The impossible happens. Jesus prays and cries out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man comes out. In our own life of faith, I think we can take Jesus' response to heart. For one, when we suffer, we know that we serve a God who weeps with us, who sits by us in our difficulties and loves us in our weakness. We also learn that our response to our brothers and sisters in need is not to jump to the hope of the final resurrection, but rather we can help them experience the love and compassion of Jesus in the present. Jesus matters right now. We can experience resurrection life in our relationship with God today, and we can share that with others. We may not always have the power to change the events of people's lives or the laws of nature, but we do have the power of compassion and love. I've experienced this in my own life of faith, and maybe you have too. During my second year of seminary, I lost my nephew Drew to brain cancer. He wasn't even two years old yet. My family didn't receive the miracle that we prayed for, And yet, we experience the tangible presence of God in our lives during this time of sorrow. We had people who prayed with us through the long, dark night. We had healing hands of compassion that held us in our grief. I had friends that wept with me, distressed and moved in their compassion and love. And through this, I knew that my faith was not only a faith of tomorrow or some distant future, but a source of hope and strength for this very day. I also see evidence of this resurrection life here at Trinity. Because you've been welcomed by the love and grace of God, you've chosen to officially extend that welcome to all, even those who have previously been excluded because of their sexuality. Here God's grace matters today in the everyday life of this community. As people, we are transformed by Jesus, and as communities, we're transformed too. In the story of Lazarus, we see how Jesus embodies the love and compassion of God. We see this new resurrection life is not meant to be only a spiritual hope for tomorrow, but also a hope for today that's living. Lazarus' death hints at Jesus' own death on the cross, And in the cross, Jesus is not all-powerful, but suffering with humanity. When Jesus is raised, it's not a worldwide phenomenon or a huge public event. Instead, Jesus appears to his friends and his followers. And even in his resurrected body, he's recognized by the wounds of the cross in his hands and in his feet. Not in glory, but in scars. Jesus' identity is found in being one who suffers with others. 
And so it is with us as followers of Jesus. We can be recognized as Christians when we grieve with others, when we care for those in need in our community, when we welcome those who are outcasts, when we bear the marks of the cross. This is living into the resurrection hope of today. Amen.